Back in the late 80s, early 90s, when I had my Commodore 64, blockbuster action movies were all the rage. We had it all. The Terminator, Aliens, Predator, Rambo, you name it. We were spoiled for choice. So in this top 10, I'm going to be showing you the movie blockbuster games that I used to play on my favourite 8-bit micro, the Commodore 64. Now these might not necessarily be the best movie games you can have on the Commodore 64, but with a sprinkle of nostalgia, some amazing music, these are the ones I used to love and still do today. I hope you enjoy them as well. Let's run! We start off in 10th place, and in number 10 we've got Total Recall, which is a 1990 platform game developed and published by Ocean Software that was released for the Commodore 64, Amiga, Amstrad, CPC, ZX Spectrum, and the NES. Total Recall, of course, is based on the 1990 film of the same name. So I'm sure you all know the story that is Total Recall, and in this game you start off as Quaid. Now, there are four levels in total. The first being a platformer, Levels 2 and 3 are overhead race games, and the final level is similar to the first. Quaid must firstly find the Rebel Resistance leader, Quarto, who will then reveal the location of the alien reactor. This vast machine will transform Mars, releasing oxygen and freeing its people from the tyranny of the Martian corruption led by the evil Cohagen. Number 9 is Aliens the Computer Game. This is a 1986 video game developed and published by Activision for the Commodore 64. It is based on the film of the same title and is also known as Aliens US in Europe, where it was initially planned to be released as Aliens the Second Part. Now this may be just down to personal preference, but I prefer this Aliens game over the other one, which was by Electric Dreams. For me, this one was just a little bit better and a little bit more immersive. Aliens is a series of six mini-games strung together via a graphical interactive sequences akin to an adventure game through only interaction possible is advancing the dialogue displayed in the speech balloons. The mini-games are mostly action sequences that involve piloting a ship from the solar core to the planet's surface, recognising equipment and of course fighting aliens. Now for me the inclusion of the motion tracker, um, the tracker that Newt has on her arm when you've got to try and rescue her from the nest and then of course the fight at the end with the mother alien, those were the things that made this game just stand out a little bit more than the European release. Now just when you thought you'd escaped aliens, here comes Alien 3. This is an absolute cracking game that in my opinion is way underrated, however the difficulty does put a lot of people off sometimes me included. As you can see, Alien 3 is a run and gun video game based on a 1992 film of the same name. The game was released for the Sega Genesis and the Amiga in 1992, with additional versions being released in 93 for the Commodore 64, Game Boy, Game Gear, the NES, the SNES and the Master System. Of course the player controls Ellen Ripley, the film's main character who progresses through the Farina 161 prison colony that was featured in the film. The player can jump, shoot, climb ladders, crawl through tunnels, open doors and use elevators. Unlike the film, Ripley has a large arsenal of weapons that can be used against the game's enemies. And also carries a motion tracker, of course that detects when the enemies are near, giving you a little bit of early warning. In 7th place, we have 007, License to Kill. License to Kill is a 1989 video game based on the James Bond film of the same name. It was developed by Quixel and published by Dormark. The game's storyline closely follows that of the film, consisting of 6 scenes in which Bond traces Jugsar Sanchez, who murdered his best friend's Felix's bride. The scenes within the game vary in setting and include helicopter chases, underwater diving, water skis and being behind the wheel of an 18 wheel tanker truck. The right hand side of the screen contains a heads up display which displays information about the current level such as the height of the helicopter in the first level or the amount of ammunition remaining in the second. Hostile enemies populate each level which can be killed or avoided and there are side objectives along the way such as picking up ammunition or drug caches. The player must dodge shots and environment dangers such as boats and falling rocks. In number 6 is Navy Seals. 
Navy Sales is a shooter platform game developed and published by Ocean Software. It was first released in the United Kingdom for the Amstrad and the Amstrad GX4000, with the Commodore 64 version coming out in 1990. It was later re-released in the rest of Europe for the ZX Spectrum, Atari ST and Amiga home computers in the following year. The game is based on the film of the same name and follows the protagonist, Lieutenant Dale Hawkins, progressing through five side-scrolling levels. Now back in the day, this was one of my favourite cartridge games on the Commodore 64. But after reviewing it recently, I never realised how hard it really was. As you can see, the game is a side-scrolling shoot-up and revolves around the protagonist Leighton Dale Hawkins, recovering caches of hidden stinger missiles from Arab terrorists in Oman. The game features a total of five levels with varying locations and begins with allocating five lives to the player. Something that you guys probably realise quite a lot is the music within games, and this, yet again, is another absolute masterclass of the SID on the Commodore 64. This tune really did blow me away. At 5 we have Death Wish 3. Death Wish 3 was released in 1987 by Gremlin Graphics. Now, I'll be the first person to admit, this is a Marmite game. You either love it, or you hate it. I was one of the previous ones. When I was a kid, I absolutely loved this game. Pretty much just down to its gratuitous violence. However, whether you like the game, whether you loathe the game, I think pretty much everyone can agree that Ben Daglish makes an absolutely fantastic musical score for this game. So, if you're looking for some mindless violence, some mindless fun where you're walking around being Charles Bronson blasting old grannies to pieces with bazookas, machine guns and magnums, then look no further than this game. This is the game that you have been looking for. Well, we couldn't do a top 10 action games without mentioning Rambo, could we? So here he is at number 4 with Rambo First Blood Part 2. This is a 1985 video game based on the film of the same name. The game is designed by David Collier and Tony Pomfret with the ZX Spectrum converted by Platinum Productions. The Commodore 64 version's music is by Martin Galway, incorporating melodies from the film's score. The game follows the movie story. The player controlling Rambo has to find his lost equipment, locate the POW camp, rescue the hostages and make it back to the extraction point while being pursued constantly by respawning enemies. Rambo starts off with just a bowie knife and grenades, both of which have an unlimited supply, as with all the weapons, and gains points for killing the enemy and for collecting the following equipment. Rocket launchers, the M16 rifle and bone arrows, both explosive and non-explosive. As you can probably tell, the gameplay is based on Capcom's arcade game Commando. Part man, part machine, all cop. Robocop, of course, is at number three. Robocop is the beat em up run and gun action game developed and published by Data East for the arcades in 1988, based on the 1987 film of the same name. It was sub licensed to Data East by Ocean Software, who obtained the rights from Orion Pictures at the script stage. Data East and Ocean Software subsequently adapted the arcade game for the home computers. The game was a critical and commercial success. The arcade game was the highest grossing arcade game of 1988 in Hong Kong and reached number 2 on Japan's monthly game machine arcade charts. On home computers the game sold over 1 million copies worldwide and was especially successful in the United Kingdom where it was the best selling home computer game of the 1980s. The gameplay is very similar to Data East's arcade game Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninja, released earlier in the same year. Robocop includes elements from both beat em up and run and gun games. At number 2 we have Batman, which is also known as Batman the Movie. This is an action video game developed and published by Ocean Software based on the 1989 film of the same name. It was also released in 1989 for the Amiga, the Amstrad CPC, the Atari ST, the MS-DOS, MSX and the ZX Spectrum. The game itself consists of five levels based on events from that movie. 
Each stage has a time limit and a health gauge, represented by Batman's face turning into the Jokers, with Batman losing a life if he runs out of either. The levels have varying gameplay. In the first level, styled as a side-scrolling gameplay, Batman fights his way through the Axis chemical plant to confront Jack Napier, knocking him into the vat of chemicals and turning him into the Joker. Levels 2 and 4 were very similar, one where you're driving the Batmobile and the other flying the Batwing. In the final level, it is very similar to the first, Batman must climb to the top of Gotham City Cathedral and stop the Joker from escaping on a helicopter. And here we are, number one, my favourite movie blockbuster game from back in the day was of course Platoon. Now this does have a certain amount of nostalgia for me, being the first ever game that I bought myself with my own money and of course it was a hit squad as well. Platoon is a side scrolling action game developed by Ocean Software and published by Data East. It was released for an absolute plethora of systems between 1987 and 1988. Now, yet again, I have to mention the absolutely fantastic music in this game. Jonathan Dunn done an absolutely superb job with not only the in-game music, but also the title music. The game comprises of four stages. Stage 1, you're in the jungle, which is a side-scroller. The player is able to navigate vertically and horizontal through the screens. You must then find the tunnel system for the next level. The player is now in a tunnel system and the point of view has changed to a first-person shooter. The player was able to navigate through the tunnel system using the map obtained earlier in stage 1. Back in the day, this was the furthest I ever got on this game. These days, I do get to level 2 and possibly level 3 at a push. Stage 3 is the bunker. It's overnight and you're under constant siege by the enemy. The player must use the flares obtained in the tunnel system in order to see the enemy outside the bunker to be able to shoot them. In the final stage, the player is now navigating through the jungle in a third person view. The player has a 4 minutes to complete this level and must navigate through the jungle while killing enemies as well as avoiding sniper fire. So guys, that's my top 10 movie blockbuster games from back in the day. Not the best of games, but the games that I used to absolutely love playing the most. What would be in your top 10? Thank you for watching and remember, if you like this video, Please like and subscribe to the channel for future Commodore 64 related content and until next time, goodbye. I'll be back.